Okay, uh, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on anti-cancer chemotherapy. Okay, so in this video what we're going to talk about is uh, the nitrogen mustard drugs. Now, these were some of the first anti-cancer chemotherapies uh, to be developed. I think the nitrogen mustard, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, which is a drug known as mechlorethamine, uh, was developed like in 1946 and was first, first started to be used in uh, 1946. Okay, right. So, these are um, anti-cancer drugs that come under the umbrella of alkylating agents, and you may well hear that term used in relation to alkylating agents, okay? You may well use the, uh, hear that term used in relation to the nitrogen mustards, okay? So it means that what they are going to do is add alkyl groups to uh, DNA, basically, so alkylating agents. So what's an alkyl group? Well, basically, it's just a hydrocarbon group. So, uh, these drugs are going to add hydrocarbon groups onto the DNA, and this is going to end up stopping the DNA from being able to be replicated, also in stopping the DNA from being able to be transcribed, and also potentially activating, uh, um, activating the p53 um, uh, pathway which senses DNA damage and then potentially leading to the cell committing apoptosis, committing suicide. So, these are powerful drugs to stop the uh, growth of cancer cells. Okay, right. So the structure of this video then, we're going to start off with some examples of uh, nitrogen mustard drugs. We're then going to look at the mechanism by which they actually add uh, alkyl groups onto the DNA. We're then going to look at the effect that this has on cells, and uh, specifically rapidly dividing cells such as cancer cells, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, that will be it then. Okay, right. So, let's start off with some examples. So the first one we'll start off with is the nitrogen mustard. So the nitrogen mustard drug. So it's got loads of different names. It's called nitrogen mustard. Okay, it's also referred to as HN2, so you'll occasionally hear it referred to as HN2. You'll also hear it referred to as mechlorethamine, so let me write this one down, mechlorethamine, okay. And finally, it's also known as chlormophene, okay, so chlormophene is another name that's quite common uh, to hear it used, chlormophene. Okay, there we go. So those are the four names that you can hear this drug referred to, and there are more as well. Um, so I think it's also just referred to as mustard, and it's also got brand names, which it's known as. So there are many different names for this drug. Uh, but the structure of this drug, and this actually is going to be important when we look at the mechanism, the structure is that you have a nitrogen at the centre, okay, and then you have two really important groups here. So these are ethyl groups. This is a carbon followed by another carbon, and these have got hydrogens off them. Okay, and I'll draw it like this because it takes less time to draw it like this, but really what I mean by that is it's a CH2. The CH2 means a methylene group, like so. So really it's just because I'm too lazy to draw this, because this group is going to come up continuously when we're discussing nitrogen mustards. This really is the characteristic of a nitrogen mustard. They have these chloroethyl groups. So this is a chloroethyl group. And this is really how they work. This is the group that's responsible for them being able to bind to DNA. Okay, and they have two of these chloroethyl groups. So here is another chloroethyl group on this same molecule. Okay, and then finally, this group over here is some sensible thing. It's just a methyl group. So that's the structure of mechlorethamine, uh, or nitrogen mustard, or chlormethine, or HN2. Okay, so that's our first example of a nitrogen mustard drug. Okay, we're now going to look at another example. Okay, the next example we're going to look at is melphalan. 
which is a drug specifically used to treat melanomas. And I'll explain why it's so useful in treating melanomas in a moment. Okay, so melphalan, what's its structure? Because its structure is going to explain why it's so useful in treating melanomas. And if you don't know what a melanoma is, I'll explain what a melanoma is for you in a moment. So, again, what you have is the same nitrogen atom with these chloroethyl groups coming off. So this is quite nice. It's got the same structure. Okay, all that's going to change, in fact, is going to be what's stuck on here. So in nitrogen mustard, it was very, very simple. It was just a methyl group. In melphalan, basically you're going to have a phenylalanine group stuck on the end. So let's now stick the phenylalanine amino acid group here. So here's our benzene ring, okay? Here's our methylene group of the phenylalanine R group, okay? And here's the rest of the amino acid. Here's the core structure of the amino acid. Okay, so here's the carboxylic acid group down here. Okay, and then up also off the alpha carbon, you have this amino group over here. So let me color this bit in here. This bit that I'm circling in, this portion off this central nitrogen that's important for its actual alkylating agent activity, uh, this is just a phenylalanine amino acid. So basically, melphalan is just phenylalanine with this essential nitrogen mustard portion over here. Okay, and it also has another name. It's also known as L-phenylalanine, which refers to the, um, the optical isomer that this phenylalanine actually is. So it's a larvorotatory enantiomer rather than uh, the dextrorotatory enantiomer. So L-phenylalanine, and then you just have mustard. So this portion is known as the mustard portion. So let me circle this portion. Okay, so here's in pink, this is the mustard portion. Okay, here or the nitrogen mustard portion, but we'll just call it the mustard portion. Again, this is the portion that's essential for its role as an alkylating agent, as we'll see in a moment. Okay, so L-phenylalanine mustard is also often abbreviated to L-PAN. So these are all names for the same thing, melphalan. So melphalan, L-phenylalanine mustard, or L-PAN, they're all referring to this same drug here. Now, why is this so effective at uh, treating melanomas? So, firstly, what is a melanoma? So, in the skin, you have cells, which I'll draw here, known as melanocytes. So, this is a melanocyte. Now, these cells are relatively rare. Compared to the normal skin cells, these are rare. So what do melanocytes do? They are not the cells that make up the bulk of the skin. Instead, these cells produce a compound known as melanin. And melanin is the pigment within the skin. So this is pigment. This is what gives you a tan. This is what controls your skin color, basically. If you have a lot of melanin, then you have darker skin, and you have a greater protection against uh, UV rays, because that's what melanin is for. It's for uh, protection against UV rays. UV ray protection. So if you have darker skin, you have more melanin, and you have greater protection against UV rays. Whereas if you have whiter skin, you have less melanin, and uh, this means you have less protection against UV rays. So generally, people living in hotter countries where there's uh, more exposure to UV rays, they have darker skin to protect them against this increased exposure. And people living in the um, colder countries where there's less sun, um, I, I don't think I saw the sun once today, so yes. Um, so where there's less sun, uh, the um, you don't need as much melanin because you're not exposed to as many UV rays. So um, you don't um, have as dark skin. Okay, right. So these melanocytes are responsible for producing melanin, the pigment of the skin. Now, in order to produce this melanin pigment, they need something to make the melanin out of. And what do they use as their starting material? They use phenylalanine, okay, which has the 
three letter amino acid code um, PHE phi like this. Okay, so a melanoma, melanoma is a tumor of melanocytes. So if you get cancer in melanocytes where these cells are dividing out of control and are becoming metastatic, that's what is known as a melanoma. Okay, uh, so why is our melphalan drug so good at treating melanomas? Because of this phenylalanine sticking off the side. So these melan melanocytes mistake this melphalan drug rather foolishly for phenylalanine. So they uptake it like mad into their cytoplasm and they get really high levels of this melphalan drug inside their cytoplasm, far higher than all the other cells of the body, which means that it will be toxic on these cells but not on the other cells because the other cells have got a much lower exposure and I'm afraid that's the blunt reality of these drugs, these nitrogen mustards. Uh, other than by this clever trick here, it's very difficult to make these selective. They are horrible drugs. They are cytotoxic. They kill cells, and they don't just kill cancer cells, they'll kill any cell. So we need this clever trick here that basically this drug will be selectively uptaken into the cancer cells, and therefore it won't harm the other cells of the body. We're trying to minimize the exposure of the rest of the cells of the body to this foul compound, okay, uh, and this is one way in which we can make the therapy in some sense targeted by making sure that the only cell which gets the lethal dose is the uh, cell type that's involved in the cancer. Of course, all your other melanocytes are going to get hit hard as well, but uh, it's better just to have one limited cell type like that being hit than every single cell type in the body. So it's, it's a step in the right direction at least. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion of the nitrogen mustard drugs in the next video.